Hello and welcome to this review of the Fallen Historical Romance book series by Eve Pendle. I'm Olivia, your new favorite resource for book recommendations you can easily screenshot, and you're watching Random Olive Reads. So first up, we have Falling for a Rake, and it does involve a literal actual fall. We start with a prim and proper lady who hunts for ferns, and yes, that is indeed a real historical hobby. And a rake of a man is sort of following her through the woods and trying to flirt with her, even though she's trying to politely put him off and tell him to go away. And then amidst their argument, they fall down some sort of abandoned mine and get stuck there overnight. Well, now that they're basically ruined, they need to get married, but both of them have the secrets from the past and neither are quite what they seem um, in public. Lady Emily is the daughter of a duke. She's been engaged before, but her fiancé had died in a hunting accident. So now Emily doesn't participate in any physically strenuous activities, and she only hunts ferns and not foxes. But there's definitely something more to the story there because she keeps having these nightmares about her ex-fiancé. The rakish Earl Oscar has pretty much admitted he's a terrible person, and he basically had a dalliance with the younger sister of a woman that he was courting, got the younger sister pregnant, and then refused to marry her, thinking that she was scheming and conniving to entrap him because he's an earl. Well, the young lady and their illegitimate daughter now live in the country, and he's not at all part of their lives, even though he's terribly guilty. He feels terribly guilty about it. Um, he's not exactly the rake that he seems to play in the world. He's actually kind and caring of Emily and doesn't actually take advantage of her when they're trapped together. Um, the book had a lot of interesting reveals of both Emily and Oscar's past, their presence, and learning to accept each other for who they are. And running in the background, we have like a gossip writer for the newspaper who's pretty much set, set out on stirring trouble. And the big reveal there is actually really tragic and sad and interesting and lots of drama. Next up is Once a Fallen Lady. This story takes place around the same time as book one. Now in this one, we get to follow the lives of the young woman who was ruined by Oscar and their now 10-year-old illegitimate daughter. So Lydia has been living as a fraudulent widow in a small town and raising her daughter Annie there. When Annie gets ill, Lydia doesn't have any money to send for the doctor, but the school teacher Alfred notices Annie's absence and comes to check on them. He also sends for the doctor and tries to get some toys and gifts and books, etc. Um, over the course of the illness, Alfred comes to visit often, also bringing food, making sure that Lydia is taken care of, helping to run some errands for her, etc. This one is a relatively short um, but quick read with Alfred definitely falling first and Lydia thinking that she's not worthy of him because she's not really a widow. She's a fake widow because she had this daughter that is basically illegitimate. Um, in this one, it's also fun to read about a specific event that happens in book one, but now from a different perspective. So I definitely enjoyed reading these two books back to back. The third and final book in the series is Catch a Falling Duke, and this book takes place about 10 years after the first two books of the series, with Hugo, who is Emily's brother, having just inherited the dukedom. While Hugo is looking through papers in the study, he finds out that his family fortune is founded upon something horribly upsetting, like enough for him to like throw up out the window. So Hugo is trying to run away from his estate, try to take some time to think, and he encounters a woman at an inn and spends the night with her. We're, we're talking like less than 10% into the book already for what is supposed to be a one night stand. Um, Beatrice is a lonely widowed farmer whose parents have also died and is now looking to find a man who is named in a letter that she found of her mother's. She's wondering maybe is there some sort of family connection with this guy. So she and Hugo spend the next day looking for the man only to be met with disappointment uh, while Hugo ultimately admits his troubles to Beatrice and also the fact that he's a duke. 
Uh, Beatrice insists there's no future between them due to their differences in social standing, and they part ways. This is or pretty early on in the book. They kind of break ties. And at some point, though, Hugo finds his way to try to prove his commitment to Beatrice, taking part whatever whatever he can get of her. So he's, like, off to her farm trying to, like, work as a laborer. And so we get to go back to Beatrice's farm, meet all her farmhands, and realizing that she actually does have a found family there. This book was a really fun way to tie things back together. We get to learn how Hugo copes with his grandfather's ill-gotten wealth. Um, after the story, there is a bonus epilogue from the author's website that is just kind of like little happily ever afters with um, Hugo and Emily and the people at the farm. So overall thoughts, the pacing of the romance in all three of these books was really delightful. It kind of burns quick enough for you to keep interested in the characters and you're just wanting to root for them to fall in love. Definitely not a slow burn, angsty type of romance. Um, in the background, though, of all the romance stories, we have social justice being a very important theme throughout. It's really interesting to read about such progressive characters and how they leverage their status for good causes. I mean, from the first book, we have Oscar, who comes across as like a rake who doesn't take things seriously, but he's actually trying to influence votes in the House of Lords by making these like outrageous statements. So kind of running counter to um, how he portrays himself. And then in the second book, we have Alfred, the school teacher, trying to build a school for everyone who wants to learn regardless of like religious ties and financial ties. And then in the third book, we have Hugo feeling immense guilt for his wealthy upbringing and trying to make reparations. So these plot lines are just as important as the romance plot, especially as you see that their partners take up their causes as well. Um, overall, super enjoyable series and definitely needs more attention to it. And I'm surprised more people have not discovered the series yet. Thank you so much for watching this video. Links to all the books are in the description box. Like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And you can follow me on Instagram at randomolive.